Hello and welcome all. This is the last part of the series of tutorials on Contoso University web app. It demonstrates the process of creation of Razor Pages web apps during Entity Framework using Entity Framework Core and Visual Studio 2017. Now today is the part 8 and we are going to delve into the tutorial. It has been divided into three sections for brevity and in the first section today we are going to discuss the concepts of concurrency conflicts, handling concurrency, what a concurrency is. So a concurrency conflict occurs when a user navigates to the edit page for an entity, another user updates the same entity or the same table before the first user's change is written to the database. Now, if concurrency detection isn't enabled when concurrent updates occur, that means when simultaneous updates occur or near simultaneous updates occur, the last update wins. That is the last update values are saved to the database. The first of the current updates are lost. So now there is an example. Um, there is a talk about optimistic concurrency which allows concurrency conflicts to happen and then reacts appropriately when they do. For example, here is an example of uh, edit the department entry. So it has got the budget administrator name start date. Now Jane, say one of the users, visits the department's edit page and changes the budget for the English department from 350,000. So say just right to zero dollars so no budget now before Jane clicks save another user John visits the same page and changes the start date field from 9-1-2007 to 9-1-2013 so if it is US culture then it is for 1st uh, of uh, September 20, 2007 to 1st of September 2000. 13 or if it is UK culture then it is 1st 9th of uh, January 2007 and it changes it to 9th of January 2013 so whichever be the culture it is irrespective that the question is that he changes the start date okay so now the first user clicks the save first and sees her change when the browser displays the index page on her own machine. So budget is changed from 350,000 to the zero budget. Now John clicks save on the edit page that still shows a budget of 350,000 because he hasn't updated or refreshed his browser as he is working from a different place at almost the same time. Now what happens next is determined by how you handle concurrency conflicts. So optimistic concurrency includes the following options. You can keep track of which property a user has modified and update only the corresponding columns in the database. This is one of the approaches. In this scenario, no data would be lost because Jane is um, updating a different property, say budget, and John is updating another property and the same entity, so no data will be lost. The next time someone browses the English department, they will see both Jane's and John's changes. This method of updating can reduce the number of conflicts that could result in data loss. Data loss. However, this approach can't avoid data loss if competing changes are made to the same property. Right? So if John changes the start date, which was already changed by um, Jane, then obviously there will be data loss. And is it's not generally practical in a web app. It requires maintaining significant state in order to keep track of all the fetched values and the new values. So maintaining large amount of state can affect app performance and can increase app complexity compared to the concurrency detection on an entity. So maybe the concurrency detection in any other way would have been less complex and would have been if it requires the application to mean maintain significant state. Now you can let John's change override Jane's change. 
So the next time someone browses the English department, they will see 9, 1, 20, 13 and fetch 350,000 value. This approach is called client wins or last in wins scenario. All the values from the client takes precedence over what's in the data store. If you don't do any coding for concurrency handling, client wins happens automatically. So I would think that this is the default configuration. Now you can prevent John's change from being updated in the database. Typically the app would display an error message, show the current state of the data, allow the user to reapply the changes. This is called a store win scenario. The data store values take precedence over the values submitted by the client. The data store means the database values. So you implement the store win scenario in this tutorial and we'll overlook the client wins or the first scenario maintenance of state. So this method ensures that no changes are overwritten without a user being alerted. Now handling concurrency. When a property is configured as a concurrency token, Entity Framework Core verifies that property has not been modified after it was fetched. So once it was fetched, I mean once the browser has fetched the property, it has not been changed. This check occurs when save changes or save changes async is called. So whenever you are saving the changes or saving changes async, these two methods are called, any one of these two methods are called. So this uh, concurrency check occurs. Now if the property has been changed after it was fetched, say supposing Jane has fetched it on her browser and the property has been changed, a DB update concurrency exception is thrown. The DB and data model must be configured to support throwing DB update concurrency exceptions. Now detecting conflicts, concurrency conflicts on a property. Concurrency conflicts can be detected at the property level with the concurrency check attribute. The attribute can be applied to multiple properties on the model. Okay, so we could look for more information with the keyword data annotations, concurrency check. Now, concurrency check attribute isn't however used in this tutorial. So we'll go for the concurrency conflicts in a different manner. So detecting concurrency conflicts on a row. To detect concurrency conflicts, a row version tracking column is added to the model. We'll see soon how the row version tracking column is implemented. Now, this is Microsoft SQL Server specific. So other databases, if you are working on Oracle or say PostgreSQL or Oracle uh, or say MySQL, these databases may not provide a similar feature. Now, it's used to determine that an entity has not been changed since it was fetched from the database. The database generates a sequential row version number that's incremented each time the row is updated. In an update or delete command, the where clause includes the fetched value of the row version. If the row being updated has changed, row version doesn't match the fetched value. So if the row version say at a particular time is 5 and it has been updated to the value 6, so the row version doesn't match the fetched value and the update or, or another condition is that if the update or delete commands don't find a row because the where clause includes the fetched row version, a db update concurrency exception is thrown. So again, if the row being updated has changed, row version doesn't match the fetched value update or delete commands don't find a row because the where clause includes the fetch row version, a db update concurrency exception is thrown because the row has been changed since it was fetched. In entity framework code, when no rows have been updated by an update or delete command, again a concurrency exception is thrown. Okay, we'll see them in action. Now, in this application that we have built so far till the version, till the part 7, we will add a tracking property to the department entity. Now, 
in models department cs we'll add a tracking property named row version as per the microsoft documentation so going back to the code um, a row version will add to the department model so get back straight to the visual studio so pages uh, models pages department.cs so i will just write over select everything and paste the code from the clipboard right so we'll find that this part is newly added so a data annotation timestamp is put over a newly created field row version all right which is returning an array of bytes okay so this timestamp attribute in row version specifies that this column is included in the where clause of update and delete commands the attribute is called timestamp because earlier version of sql server used a sql or sql timestamp data type which has now been replaced by a sql row version type in sql now the following code shows a portion of the t-sql generated by entity framework core when the department name is updated so this is the code generated by entity framework core when the department name is updated update department set name equals at the rate this is the parameter at the rate p0 where department id equals at the rate p1 and row version equals at the rate p2 now this preceding highlighted code shows the where clause this is the where clause containing the row version if the db row version doesn't equal the row version parameter at p2 no rows are updated. The following highlighted code shows the T-SQL that verifies that exactly one row was updated. That is the select query. This bottom portion. Select row version from department where at at row count, which is which returns the number of rows affected by that last statement. Now, if no rows are updated, entity framework code throws a DB update concurrency exception, which is in line which with we, we have said, you know, the row version doesn't match the fetched value. The update or delete commands don't find a row because the where clause includes the fetched row version and a db update concurrency exception is thrown. Okay. After the row being updated has changed. Now, we will have to update the database adding the row version property we have just added the row version property on the department model now adding the row version property changes the database model which requires a migration now we'll build the project and enter these following commands okay so we'll build the project control shift b is the hotkey so it started the building Take a VY again. So build succeeded. Right. And then I'll have to go for this commands which I have now copied on my clip. Yeah. So CD. right and here i can give them these two commands right 
hydrolysis. Okay, info Microsoft dot entity framework core dot infrastructure entity framework core initialize school context using provider with options none. Okay, that's fine. So the next line is database update. Okay. Great, database has been updated. So we'll just minimize this window and go on to the next. Now this preceding commands adds the migration timestamp underscore row version dot cs migration file. So first of all, migrations row version timestamp underscore row version dot cs. That's great and updates the migration school context model dot snapshot file okay so it then migration school model snapshot dot cs file so where does it update uh, let's see the department this one so row version has been added superb now we'll okay we have already done migrations to update the database at this point and that's it thank you very much for watching so please put your comments and feedback and like my video if you have really enjoyed it and learned anything out of it and don't forget to subscribe on my channel Thank you very much. See you.